Welcome back to our quick question series. I'm Ian. I'm Steve. We are making an RPG called Down Below, which is a sci-fi cyberpunk RPG with a narrative non-random system where the players choose which actions they succeed or fail at based on the GM saying which actions are challenging enough that they need to use some of their narrative potential or allow themselves to fail. Today, Steve will be asking me a question, and I will try to answer it in five minutes or less. All right, so the question of the day is, are you ready? Mm -hmm. In most games, whether it's role-playing games, miniatures games, card games, or what have you, there's a strong emphasis on stuff and combinations. A prime example of this is Dungeons & Dragons. Mm -hmm. Several current editions have combinations of uh, gear and abilities that um, basically that work together for a combined effect. Our system does not have that. How will we scratch those itches? Okay, so the two halves of this are both the stuff and the people like to have interactions that make them stronger than the sum. For the first part, stuff, it's a relatively simple answer. You just give them stuff, and you make it important in the story, even though it's not necessarily a mechanical advantage to have this different gun. It can be really cool to have this different gun, this different car, this item, and it can matter to what they're doing in the world. Or to put it another way, the Maltese Falcon was not an enchanted idol that I unlocked doors. It was just a bird with jewels hidden inside it. But it was really important to the story, and if you have something that is important to the characters and important to the story that you're telling, that can make it important to the players, and we will be providing you with examples of those in the books that are important in the world that you tell your stories in, so that you can create these situations where they are important to your story. So that covers the cool stuff itch. That was actually really easy. What but about the combo itch? Combos, okay. That's a little bit less important, because, or rather, that, that's a little bit less easy, that's less simple to do in this system, because this system is very focused on you have a simple one-to-one -one relationship between are you good at something and is that something relevant in this situation. And there's not really much in the way of you have to combine this, this, and this to get this effect. This is where story and scene design comes in for the GM. You need to set up your scenarios in such a way that being good at one thing won't necessarily be the be-all end-all, so that players who are good at a variety of things can feel like they're getting that combo effect because, ah, because I am good at computers and good at sneaking around and good at talking to people, I can get away with sneaking in, seeming to be a new employee that this security guard didn't recognize but my credentials check out because I hacked together this ID or whatever. Uh, you can also make it feel like the players are getting that combined effects and getting more bang for their buck uh, mileage by having stories and things in the story that they can take advantage of so that they get more out of their successes. So, for example, if you create situations where the players have opportunities to cleverly use their traits, let's take a classic example of getting jumped by ten goons. Well, who do these goons work for, and why are they jumping the players? We've talked about this sort of question before. And we mentioned previously that there might be different ways to handle the situation where if you handled it in a certain way, like convincing the head goon that you totally have the money right here and you're about to go pay his boss off and here he can have a piece just to lay off you, then you're bribing your way out of the situation and convincing your way out of the situation and using basically one success to defeat all ten goons because you don't have to fight any of them. Whereas fighting them individually would take at least one success per goon in most cases, depending on the way that you do it. Or maybe there's con clever ways that the players manipulate the environment 
to successfully blow something up and take out multiple goons. The point is that if you allow there to be clever opportunities for the players to apply their traits using their environment, using the story environment, so knowing the players in the local game, whether that's the underworld or local politics or whatever your story is focused on, or uh, corporate infighting or whatever sort of shady deals. So the point is, if you have that landscape and you describe the landscape well, combinations between the player's abilities and the world that they're in are the best way to scratch the combo itch in this game. And that, in, and that ties right back into having story important stuff. It's not just stuff in their hands, it's also stuff lying around in the environment. And there we have it. We've got some more questions for you coming up tomorrow, and uh, until then, this has been Steve. And this is Ian, and be careful when you're at the cracks of society, because you might fall through and end up down below.